Please stand for the reading of the scriptures. This is John 10, 1 through 4. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he go, goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Praise be to God. God. You may be seated. So glad you're here today. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this moment in time. Um, I pray we've prepared our hearts to receive your word. Uh, your word is active and alive. And it, you say it, it won't come back to you void. It will accomplish your purposes. So I pray, Father, as your word is spoken today, by the power of your spirit, you'll implant that word in every heart here. And we'll hear what you want for each and every one. And let the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength, you are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've been going through the one-year Bible with us, we read this passage this past week. In fact, pretty recently. From John chapter 10. And Jesus calls himself a good shepherd here and says he calls his sheep by name. I think that's really interesting as we start thinking about this. The Bible begins with the story of a God who speaks. Very beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was null and void and without form. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God began to move across the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And then... Man fails the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden. And what happens? God goes walking through the garden looking for them. And he says, Adam, where are you? He calls him by name. Not only that, but God has spoken to us through his son, Jesus. We're studying the book of Hebrews. And that's the way the, the writer of the book of the Hebrews begins his book. He says, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. God speaks. Not only that, God speaks to us through the Bible. His written Word. I hope you've had this experience since we started going through the one-year Bible, those of you on the journey. But have you ever in your life had the experience of looking through the Bible, reading through the Bible. You may be looking for comfort. You may be looking for counsel. You don't even know exactly where to find it. And then you read something, and it finds you right where you are. God spoke in the beginning. God spoke through the prophets. God spoke through His Son. God spoke through His Word. And the question then is, does God still speak today? Yes, I believe He does. And while He will never speak to you in such a way that would contradict what He has already spoken through the living Word, His Son Jesus, and the written Word, the Scripture, His Holy Spirit still speaks to His people today. Now, we may not always know how to listen or how to detect His voice. But I believe God is still speaking today, right now. And just like Adam at the very beginning, he knows your name. Jesus said that in what we just read. I'm the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. I call them by name. They know me. I, you know, I doubt that very many of us in this room know any shepherds personally. And so, the picture that Jesus offered here to the people in first century Palestine was very powerful to those who heard it. Because they knew exactly about shepherds. They knew that shepherds did certain things that we don't even know about. 
And what's interesting to know about shepherds is that they were very involved in the lives of each individual sheep. They protected them. They made sure they had food to eat. They made sure they had clean water to drink. They binded up their wounds. And they would even name each individual sheep within their herd, within their own flock. And what's really interesting back then is many flocks would intermingle at, at, at a pasture land. They wouldn't separate them by fences like we would. They all the sheep would herd together and intermingle. And there weren't any brands on the sheep, so all of them grazing together. Yet when it was time to head home, each shepherd would call out to his sheep herd. And the sheep would separate themselves and follow their own shepherd because they knew his voice. He could call each of them by name. Now I realize I'm talking to people this morning. Some of you may say, God has never spoken to me. Now I'm not talking about an audible voice. It's more of an internal impression. A thought that comes to your mind out of the blue. A deep conviction that grows in your heart. And I hear, and some people say, yeah, but... But how do you know that's really God? That's a normal question. But here's what I've come to experience and I believe is true. If you make it a matter of prayer, I believe God will confirm when He's speaking to you. A confirmation may come because you're reading the Bible and you read something in the Bible that confirms exactly what was going through your mind. Or, or maybe... You hear the unsolicited words of a friend that even know what you're going through, but they speak something to you that rings true. Maybe it's a circumstance that happens that somehow connects with everything that you've been going through and you sense this is God speaking. But I believe if you really are looking for it and you're sensitive, somehow God will let you know it's true. And it will never contradict His Son. And it will never contradict His Word. And when it happens, you will experience God in a way that will broaden your understanding of who God is. And here's what Jesus taught us. If we are His children, He calls to us. And He knows your name. So how does He call? How does He call us by name and help us to get back on track? Well, there's three separate stories Actually, in John's Gospel, we haven't gotten to them yet, but it fits so much with this passage here. And it gives us such great examples of God speaking to people by name. First of all, God calls us by name when we misunderstand Him. Jesus has died. And some of the women weren't even able to complete preparing His body. For burial, so they go back that early Sunday morning looking to, to, to complete that process. And the, the stones rolled away, the tomb is empty, there's no body there. And they believe his body's been stolen by somebody. They can't imagine who would do this cruel trick. And Mary Magdalene is outside of that tomb, weeping, sobbing. And a voice says, Why are you weeping? She thinks it must be the gardener. She doesn't even look up. She says, if you'll just tell me where they've taken his body so I can recover it. And then notice what John says. He says, Mary. And then she recognized him. He calls her by name. So God calls us by name when we misunderstand him. And I want to ask you this morning, how maybe have you misunderstood God? Have you thought of Him maybe sometimes as a taskmaster, somebody who's always disappointed in you, that somehow your efforts are never enough? Maybe you see Him as, as someone who's always full of condemnation and wrath. I want to tell you, God is calling you by name this morning. 
Or maybe you go to the other extreme. Maybe you see God as a, kind of a combination of a, a Santa Claus and a benevolent grandfather, somebody who wants to give you good gifts all the time and simply winks at your sins as if to say, that's okay, I understand. That way we never really have to deal with our sins. You remember with Mary? Scripture tells us that one reason she followed Jesus is Jesus cast out seven demons from her. He didn't let her stay the way she was. He delivered her, and that's why she loved him so much. The message to Jesus for all of us, even those of us who have already come to faith in Christ and accepted Him as our Lord and Savior. The same message, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, that He gave to the woman caught in adultery. Neither do I condemn you. Go your way and sin no more. It's not just one or the other. And sometimes we want to make it one or the other. We misunderstand Jesus if we say, neither do I condemn you. Go ahead and continue in sin. It's really okay with Him. He understands. And we also misunderstand Jesus if all we say is go your way and sin no more. Just go away. Sin no more. It's all about acting right. It's condemnation. It's legalism. It's like you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Because God's watching you. I want to ask you this morning, do either one of those extremes speak to you? Because Jesus came to give us the true word. How have you misunderstood God? How have you misunderstood His intentions? And What message is Jesus wanting to give you this morning with your name on it? He calls you by name when you misunderstand Him. Next of all, He calls us by name when we doubt Him. You remember when Jesus made His resurrection appearance to the disciples in the room? There was one of them that was missing, Thomas. And they were so excited and they told Thomas what they had seen. Jesus is alive. He's alive again. Thomas said, I won't believe it unless I see it. Unless I can even touch His wounds with my hands. I don't believe what you're telling me. Well, not too long after that, they were all together and Thomas was in the room. Once again, Jesus appears. And what happens? Jesus says, Thomas, come. Come feel the wound. Put your hand in my side. I mentioned this before. We don't know that Thomas ever did that. It doesn't say he did it. Just seeing Jesus and Jesus calling him by name was enough. And he bowed down and worshipped him. See, the doubt in Thomas went away. Not so much when Thomas touched Jesus. The doubt was taken away when Jesus touched Thomas by his presence. And you and I, we don't know when the Lord will touch our lives or how the Lord will touch our lives. But we do know this. When the Lord touches our life, it's a sacred, precious moment. Can you remember the last time that happened to you? Might have been a time of great sorrow. Might have been a time of great joy. But you knew that Jesus was there personally. It was an experience that had your name on it. Thomas kneels and says, My Lord and my God. That is not a statement of doubt. That is a statement of complete certainty. And when the Lord speaks to us, when He calls us by name and He makes His presence known, at that moment at least, all of our doubts melt into assurance. In that moment, we know God is real. So what about you this morning? What kinds of doubts have you brought with you today? Like Thomas, is God real? Is Jesus alive today? Can he really make a difference in my life? I want to tell you, God is calling you by name this moment, right now. 
And finally, he calls us by name when we have denied him. You know the story there. Peter, who was so certain he would never deny Jesus, he would even go to death with Jesus, and three times around that campfire, he says, I don't know him, I've never met him. He even curses the last time. Quit saying that, it's not true, I don't know him. Then it says Jesus looked at him as he was going through the courtyard, and he remembered what Jesus had said. Jesus knew what was in Peter's heart. Jesus knew he would fail, and he did. And he wept bitterly. And that's what's interesting, because when Jesus was raised from the dead, Mark's gospel points this out. The angel tells the women, go tell the disciples and Peter he's alive. He made, it, made sure they knew Peter was supposed to be included. Because, you know, when Peter heard Jesus was alive again, I'm sure he was filled with joy, but he was probably also filled with dread, because he thought, after what I've done, it's over for me. And then John gives us that wonderful story of Peter seeing Jesus on the seashore. And one of the other disciples says, it's Jesus. And it says Peter threw off his outer clothing and dived into the water. He didn't even wait till the boat to get to the other side. And they eat him in with Jesus. And that's when Jesus takes him on a trip, a walk along the beach shore. And he asked him, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. Once more, the third time. And it says when Peter heard the third time, it broke his heart because he knew he had denied Jesus three times. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Then feed my sheep. And Jesus restored Peter. He didn't condemn him. He didn't attack him personally. He dealt with the sin in Peter's life in a gentle but confrontive way. He didn't just remind him of what he'd done wrong. He gave him a way to make things right. He didn't just talk to him about his performance. He brought it back to an intimate relationship. He called him by name, Peter, do you love me? And that's what Jesus wants most with each and every one of us, a relationship. So how about you this morning? Have you denied Jesus? Oh, maybe not verbally, but by your actions. Are you trying to run and hide from God just like Adam did in the garden? God came and called me by name. And He's calling you by name. He's saying... I love you. And he's asking the question, do you love me? So what's your answer? Have you maybe misunderstood God? Have you been searching for Him in all the wrong places? Have you maybe accused Him of things that aren't a part of His nature because of the circumstances in your life that you don't understand why they're happening so you blame God for them? Have you doubted him? Thought maybe he wasn't real? That he's just a figment of some people's imagination? Or have you denied him? Turned your back on what you know to be true? Well, here's the good news. God is here this morning. And he's calling you by name. Will you do what Jesus said? Will you hear His voice. Will you come to Him? Will you follow Him? He's calling you. And He knows your name. Let's pray. Father, thank You for Your relentless love expressed most poignantly through your son, Jesus. A love that never lets go, that never quits pursuing. A love that constantly comes to woo us back 
So Lord, if we're here this morning and we've misunderstood your intentions toward us, we've accused you of things that aren't true, help us to see who you truly are. Lord, if we come here this morning and we have doubts about whether this is even real or not, I pray, Lord, you'll show up in people's hearts and lives and they'll sense your presence and know how real you are. If we've denied you by either verbally denying you or by our actions, Lord, I pray that we would see that you are wooing us back to yourself, just like you did with Peter. We are forgiven if we just come and receive your forgiveness. Because you call us and you know us by our name. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.